Now, coming back to coming back to the admin panel, we also have this this uh, tab, which is the API docs tab, which shows us uh, some basic information about the API. The API is a very powerful uh, is a very powerful option for uh, for both the sports book and casino. And it's a very powerful module which allows us to uh, which allows us to do a lot of things extend our basic functionality and integrate with third-party applications of any kind including games from different providers including uh, reporting software if you need some custom reporting functionality or you want to integrate our product uh, with an existing uh, established network of, uh, of uh, agents or betting kiosks then what you do is you use the api to control accounts to transfer money back and forth from an uh, and two accounts, and um, yeah, this is this is all this is all available in two formats, which would be XML over SOAP, and also JSON. Now, um, we're gonna go we're gonna go a little bit through this API. I, I would like to get into more details with this because it's it's very used. It's very much used by a lot of people. And uh, we would like to show you that over here at the bottom, there are two documents uh, with instructions on how to connect to the API, how to, how to access the various API services, and as well as, as, well as um, some, a, list of, a list of calls and a list of other things, as well as some sample PHP code. And I would also like to, how to, to show you how to, how to get the WSDL for, for the API. There we go. So basically every, every website gets this, gets the API on this, uh, on this address. This is, also, this is also documented through our PDF documentation. And when you get here, what you see is this, we see a list of calls. Now, in order to access the API, keep in mind that the IP address needs to be authorized and the API key needs to be created. But once you did that, you have full access to all this stuff over here. Now, I'm going to open the WSDL, which is the specification in XML format. There we go. So this is the WSDL for all the calls in our API, including some, some instructions, some brief instructions, as well as the types and the function calls. This is where it's listed. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to get more information about create vouchers. There we go. It's it's showing me it's showing me what it does and what the parameters are and what the endpoint is and so on and so forth. Now, coming back over here, I would like to run an example using SOAP UI. Let's say, for instance, that I wanted to find an user account and add some credit to to that particular user, and I'm going to run this against my against my my uh, demo account that we've seen earlier. So that's the email address nick at flinkwise.com. I'm going to first, first thing I have to do is, of course, to get the API key and also authorize my IP address. But once I've done that, I'm just going to, I'm just going to include the WSDL real quick. So I'm going to get it from over here. I go back to SOAP UI and paste this over here. And let's see this. Let's see how this goes. There we go. Now, SOAP UI is smart enough to generate me to generate for me a list of API calls that I can that I can use. And now I'm going to I'm going to get user by email. I want to find an user account by email address to search the, the remote database and find an user account by by email address and then add some credit. So the first call that I need to do is to find enter the user email nick at flinkwise.com this is this is the body of the request that will be sent using using soap and also have to specify the the api key which in this case is bedvol demo key and i'm going to click over here to to send the request to the remote server and i'm getting some kind of error for some reason i've been entering something wrong over here i think the api key is wrong i'm going to try something else i'm going to I'm going to query by query by something else. Get user. Let's say that I already know the user the user ID the user ID. And I think the reason why this was happening was that my user account, my demo account, has been moved to a different website. And I can resolve that real quick. 
if you can bear with me for just a second, we did a lot of testing and this, these are our test accounts. And we, we play a lot with, with these things. From users. This will only take a minute. So I can move my, my account back to betvault.com, which where, where we were supposed to be in the first place. And I'm going to do it now. So I can try running the API call again without getting that error, 276. Seven six. Two seven six. There we go. Well, let's try the call again and see if if that was the reason for the call or maybe I got the wrong. There we go. Problem was solved. So I had my account move to a different website, and of course you can't access users belonging to a different website from the same from uh, a different API key. Now I can get I can see all my account information over here. And I can see that the user ID that I have for this account is 10028. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create a transaction. I'm going to get some get some money to this guy. And I'm going to I'm going to find I'm going to try and find there we go. Add transaction. This is the, the API call that I need to run. And it's actually pretty, pretty simple. And BetVault demo key, which is the API key. I, will, I have to provide this with every request that I send. The user ID is this. I got it from the previous call. Of course, if you, if you maintain a local cache copy of our table, you don't need to send this call every time, you, since you already have the list of users in your lo local database. And let's say I just want to give myself 123 euros. And I'm going to run the call. And let's see what we get. We get the transaction. There we go. We get the, the transaction that we have just created using the API. Now, you can actually get as many transactions as you want processed through the API. There we go. This is the transaction that we have. And it, spe it specifies that it's been running through, it's been running, it's been run through the API. We get the, like date and time and the transaction ID and blah, 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 so on and so forth. There we go. Transaction information is dumped already. Uh, by the API directly into the response of the initial call because we might want to save this in, into the remote application. And this pretty much concludes our, our, uh, our example with, uh, with the SOAP API. Now, there are different, different frameworks that you can use to, in, to integrate the SOAP API into third-party applications. Pretty much every, every programming language already has a framework or some kind of library or some kind of some kind of example code that you can use and that's pretty much all there is to it of course the api also supports json json is a very lightweight compact protocol that you can use with a rest api in order to download uh, large or very large amounts of data without having to send json call uh, soap calls with every request json is a lot faster and you can transfer you can transfer data from our database at gigabit speeds, and that's very important for large size websites. Performance is very important, and this SOAP API is the best way to quickly copy data from our database.